Good day everyone. Uh, very recently, in fact last night, someone asked me why load shedding is done the way that it's done currently. And I've explained how load shedding works on many occasions before. But I want to tell you now why you cannot just go and do a block of load shedding in one place for a period of time and then a block of load shedding in a different area for a longer period of time and then to leave those areas alone for extended periods. The reason why load shedding is spread throughout the country um, is a political one but also a practical one. So you, when you do load shedding the wider you can spread the load on the grid the more even that distribution is and on the national grid you have a national control center in Simmerpan and then you have regional control centers and all of these control centers are manned they have automatic actions with regards to breaker controls to make sure that the grid does not collapse and you do not get a grid blackout now the lower the amount of megawatt megawatts being produced on the grid is the easier it is for a blackout to occur but on the grid the way it is run in South Africa it is highly unlikely you need literally a perfect storm for something like that to take place and the auto actions to fail and so how load shedding works is, is the fact that we try and maintain a 50 hertz frequency in South Africa in the US at 60 hertz but 50 hertz is the frequency we try to maintain on the grid if the load increases on the grid and we don't have enough generating capacity the frequency starts to drop when the frequency drops to a certain level the generators on the grid will start to trip in fact all of them will trip out at the same time so to mitigate this and prevent a blackout you do load shedding and the government doesn't allow load shedding load shedding will be done whether you like it or not so it's got nothing to do with a load shedding schedule. That is absolutely uh, a wonderful, perfect world to live in. When load shedding happens, it is to stabilize the grid. It's an emergency action. What we have done is we've politicized it. It's all over the media and it doesn't belong there. The only thing that should be in the media and in the public domain is literally demand side management where you are told on a radio station or television station or on social media that you need to reduce load in your home because the grid is constrained and then give your contribution towards improving the situation before load shedding is forced to be implemented. But no Cyril Ramaphosa or uh, Gwede Mantashi or any minister or president can stop load shedding from happening. It's not possible. Not the CEO of Eskom can stop it from happening, just as the CEO of Eskom or the president or Gwede Mantashe or whoever cannot stop a unit from tripping. These are technical, uh, it's technical equipment that we're working with. The grid is a technical instrument and it's a grid. In other words, it's a grid throughout the country um, and it's interlinked. It's all synchronized and all the generators on the grid are synchronized to each other so they interact and interfere with each other so does load affect the entire grid so even when you switch your kettle on and it's two kilowatts or 2.5 kilowatts that kettle affects the grid if a lot of kettles are switched on because it's cold or heater blankets all of that needs to be added up if everyone in the country switches on a two kilowatt kettle and there's a thousand of them then there's two thousand kilowatts being used it's two megawatts and uh, obviously there's a lot more megawatts out there on the grid uh, the city of Cape Town for instance uses way over 2000 megawatts just in the metro alone so there's many other things besides kettles and televisions and so on being used load shedding will happen whether you like it or not if load shedding happens it is needed Another thing that can happen from time to time and often this is happening and load shedding is not necessarily required. This is when we need to recoup our uh, critical reserves either in the uh, gas generation plants or in uh, the pump storage schemes like Drakensberg or Palmit. Um, 
and you need to make sure that we have enough water in the top dams in these pump storage schemes to actually give us another run during peak time and this is very important because peak time is in the evenings when everyone comes home and they switch everything on so this is something to consider the the easiest time for us to have a risk of load shedding is during peak load time which is in the evenings and in the early mornings during midday it's normally not that bad except during summer times when people start putting on their air cons in the middle of the day so in the 1990s we started seeing that people started purchasing air cons for their home and we even start even started seeing midday peak something that didn't exist before we call this a grid profile or load profile and you can actually see that profile very clearly uh, on graphs if you if you have access to those graphs and see how the grid behaves typically now what do we know about the grid at this moment in time we know that the grid is not only constrained due, due to a lack of generating capacity because a lot of the plant is old we should have replaced it and Andre the Rater today said and it's interesting it's just after my broadcast yesterday that we need more generating capacity he said four to six thousand megawatts extra to just stop load shedding at the moment and he's absolutely right it should have been constructed a long time ago and he said the last time we constructed something was 2014. now think about that eight years later and we haven't done anything else how can we expect a stable grid when we do that you cannot like i said we should have replaced the entire escom generating capacity by 2030 this is what the 1998 white paper said to get back to load shedding load reduction is when people are asked or load shedding is or load reduction is implemented and you're on a schedule and Eskom tells you that to get our emergency reserves back till Friday we're going to uh, do load shedding which should actually be called load reduction because there's no emergency to replenish our dam levels as well as our diesel reserves and this is necessary uh, and important to maintain the grid stable when they are crunch times in other words when you lose units uh, when they trip because of a boiler tube leak or whatever you need something to come in in, in its place to, to maintain the to keep the grid stable or you need to load shed a lot more so you want drakensberg palmit and the, the gas uh, turbines to be ready to make up that difference in that emergency now the, the great problem is that we've been using and relying on that too much it's costing a fortune to run peak load like that it is costing a ridiculous amount of money so what we need is more base load capacity we don't need more propellers that's going to spin from time to time and when they spin they're going to be 30 percent efficient this is not what we need on a large scale at all all we are doing is making overseas countries rich and then local people that purchase these ipps from them make them rich too and a lot of people will be very upset with me over this i really don't care because i'm right the other thing that you need to understand is that i advocate that you have your own energy supply at home if you can go and become energy independent do so but a lot of people don't have that luxury and most people won't have that luxury they won't be able to put up their own solar panels at their home so they need Eskom the country needs Eskom to remain stable and to make sure that we distribute the load evenly across the grid helps for the grid not to have spikes or surges or many other things that aren't good for the grid all over the country we need even distribution of that load and when we do that with load shedding it makes it a lot easier to control at national control and at the regional control centers i really want to thank you for watching this video thank you for being a part of this channel and please subscribe if you have not if you want to you can join this channel as a member and then you can join me tomorrow night at eight o'clock for the members live stream thank you very much till the next video